What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another video. And over at LCG Auctions, they had a number of incredible mint-on-card vintage Star Wars figures, all, I believe, graded, that sold yesterday, Sunday, July 16th, uh, in an auction. And I didn't get a chance to preview them, although I probably should have. I was, tra unfortunately, traveling for most of last week, so I didn't get to put the, together the preview video, but man, there were some incredible items that sold very high grade, most of them early 12 and 20 backs, and uh, as you can see here by this thumbnail, there were some pretty beautiful items that sold. Uh, we got the Canadian Yak Face, which we'll talk about, a mint on card Boba Fett, a Vinyl Cape Jawa mint on card, lots of very, very high grade 12 and 20 backs. So uh, let's go ahead and dig right in. All of these prices that I'm gonna show you include the buyer's premium. I didn't look up what the buyer's premium is over at LCG, but I imagine it's around 20 or 25 percent, which is about standard for most of these auction houses. The first item was a double telescoping Luke Skywalker uh, AFA 85. So this one, uh, it looks like it's got the newer case, but the inner filament is kind of pushed all the way in for the display purposes. But it was an AFA 85, which is very tough to get. Looks like it's maybe got a little bit of yellowing to the torso there, uh, which you know, that could have happened after grading, who knows. Uh, and that's probably what kept the price down just a little bit. After the buyer's premium, as you can see there, it sold for $25.70 and change plus shipping. And, uh, you know, we documented a, a really nice high-end AFA 85 that sold on eBay maybe about six months ago that sold for around $3,500. And uh, this one, you know, DT Saber Luke seemed to be coming down in price just a little bit. Uh, there was an AFA 80 that sold recently at auction on eBay for around 1400 if memory serves. <clears throat> so prices are down a little bit. Uh, and so I, I think the down market combined with the fact that it does have some yellowing to that torso probably kept the price down just a little bit versus some of the highs that we've seen. Uh, next up is that Vinyl Cape Jawa mint on card. And it, it was a stunner. I, I don't really see anything wrong with the cape. Maybe some light discoloration, if anything. But it was graded AFA 85. And uh, the sub scores were 85, 85, 90. Uh, probably one of the highest graded examples out there. Uh, here's another close-up of the Jawa inside the packaging. And uh, from that angle, it looks every bit as clean as the first time it was released from the Kenner factory. So this one sold for 22206 Again, that number is down. Uh, I think last year the high that I remember was 35000 for a mint on card vinyl cape Jawa. So prices just, you know, are, are down a little bit. And uh, again, it'll be interesting to see as you go through these items that I'm going through today and then compare those to maybe some of the items that are selling at Hakes that close towards the end of July. Whether that this is an anomaly, uh, whether that, you know, Hakes is attracting more buyers, who knows. But, uh, you know, LCG does a really good job with their auction and I was pretty impressed with this lot. This this lot was pretty incredible. So an AFA 85, 12 back A Vinyl Cape Jawa. Again, sold for 22206. Uh, here was a 12 back A AFA 85 Darth Vader. The sub scores were 85, 90, 85. And that's going to be the continuing theme as we go through these items. Uh, lots of very, very high grade items. And, you know, you can see on the card there. I don't know if that's on the card, those scratches there. Uh, to the to the right of the hang tab, or if that's on the case, it looks like it might be on the card. But uh, still, it, it's a beautiful unpunched example. That one sold for sixteen thousand eight eighty six, so almost seventeen thousand dollars after the buyer's premium for a twelve back A Vader. Uh, next up was a twelve back A Princess Leia, and it, this one had straight eighty fives for the sub scores, unpunched, absolutely stunning condition. That one sold for nine thousand five hundred and thirty two dollars. Uh, next up was another 12 back A Princess Leia. This one had the SKU on the footer. And so this would be kind of the earliest example of the 12 backs. This one was a punched example. And uh, here is the grading on it. It was a CAS 80 plus 80, 85, 80 were the sub scores on that one. That one sold for 2,761. And you compare that to this one. Uh, which was not the SKU on the footer stand, but still a 12 back A. So this was kind of the next iteration after in terms of the manufacturing batches. And you can see the massive price difference for that one for the AFA 85 versus the CAS 80 plus. So people continue to pay up for very high grade AFA examples relative to an even earlier version of the 12 back A with the SKU on the footer. Uh, again, admittedly, this was a punched example, but that's a pretty massive price difference. 
Uh, next up was a 12 back A Han Solo. Uh, this one is the small head Han, uh, 85, 85, 85, where the sub scores, 9,532 on that one. So very similar in price to the 12 back A Princess Leia. That was an AFA 85. Uh, here's a 12 back B C 3 PO 85 85 90. That one sold for $5,918. Uh, another gorgeous example. So there were some pretty pretty amazing items if you had some some deep pockets. Uh, here is a 12 back B Stormtrooper. This one was straight 85s as well. That one sold for $3,037. Uh, 12 back B Luke Skywalker straight 85s. Absolutely stunning condition, and that one sold for $7,161. So there were some big prices out there, and I, I don't follow 12 backs closely enough to kind of give you a reference point uh, relative to some of the past sales, but these will at least give you some price targets to aim for if you're looking at some of those beautiful examples for sale later this month at Hakes, and uh, it'll be curious to see how they compare. This 12 back B I thought was a good deal. This was an AFA 80 plus Death Squad Commander. Uh, 85, 85, 80 were the sub scores on that one. It was a punched example and it did have a price sticker, but it only sold for 818. So I thought that was a really good deal for a beautiful uh, uh, Death Squad commander. And this one looks like it has the light blue emblem on the chest relative to some of the others that have the dark blue emblem. It did have some frosting as well, as you can see on the leg there. I don't know what it is about that Death Squad commander, but he's the, he's the main culprit when it comes to these mint on card early. 12, 20, and even I've seen them on ESB and Return of the Jedi cards where that frosting happens. So that is probably the main reason why it kept the price down. Uh, next up was a 12 back B AFA 80 plus sand people. And uh, the cape looked to be in great shape overall. And uh, just a gorgeous uh, example. Unpunched, no price sticker. That one sold for $990. That's probably the best deal that we've seen so far on these items, just given that the figure did not have any issues like that Death Squad Commander. Uh, next up was the Cloth Cape 12 back C Jawa straight 90s for the sub score. Absolutely insane. I don't remember the last time I've seen a 12 back with straight 90s for the sub score. And that one sold for $3,037. You know, I've seen some AFA 80s go for like kind of 12 to $1,400. So that shows you how much the price difference is relative to uh, one that's an AFA 90 with straight 90 sub scores. That's, that's a pretty incredible uh, time capsule type of item. Uh, next up was a Ben Kenobi 12 back C. And uh, this one was straight 85s as well for the sub score. Uh, pretty insane. I, I don't know whose collection this belonged to, but uh, they really had some very high grade early card backs. $4,041 took that one home. Uh, next up was a 12 back C R two D two straight 85s for the sub score on this one. Uh, might be the probably the best collection I've seen of early 12 and 20 backs in terms of grade and subgrades that uh, has come on the market in a while. This one sold for two thousand and seventy four dollars. Again, I think that price was pretty fair. Uh, I would assume that the the price sticker on there probably held the price back just a little bit. It might have had some scratching either on the card or on the acrylic case, but still straight 85s. Uh, for the 12-back C R2-D2. Uh, here was a 12-back Canadian R2-D2 with 90s, all straight 90s for the subscore. Absolutely insane. And the price reflected that. That sold for $6,432. And again, you compare that to the 12-back C straight 85s that sold for about a third of that price. Uh, next up was a 12-back C Chewbacca AFA-80. This one was a punched example. And uh, the sub scores were 80, 80, 85 on that one. That one sold for $1,930. Uh, here was a 12 back C Darth Vader, CAS 75 plus. Another pretty good deal if you can live with a 75 score, $900 on that one. I thought that was a really good buy. Uh, the main culprit there being the litho tear below the price sticker there. Uh, looks like it's got some residue, and then again, it was a, it was a punched example. So th that kept the uh, the score down a little bit. 75, 75 and uh, 90 were the sub scores on that one for a 75 plus overall but 900 dollars for a 12 back vader uh, can't beat that price uh, next up was a 20 back g hammerhead so now we're getting into some of the 20 backs this was a punched example that one sold for 939 dollars another very good deal there i would imagine that if this had been an unpunched example probably would have been in that 1100 to 1200 dollar range but uh, still i think 939 on that one was a great buy here was a 21 back b Greedo, this one did have a price sticker and was punched. 
and uh, that one sold for eight hundred and fifty four dollars. So two two really good deals there. Uh, here was that uh, excuse me the Boba Fett thirty one back A. It was only an AFA sixty, uh, but still uh, it I think it presents a lot nicer than a sixty grade. Uh, the main culprit being the blister there. Uh, the sub scores were 60, 75, 80. So it looks like the, the card score actually had the main uh, problem, and there it is. That's why it had the cut uh, proof of purchase. So that's always going to give you automatically a 60 grade with AFA uh, or I think or with CAS if you got a, cut, uh, a, a proof of purchase that's been cut out there. But uh, from the front, it really does display a lot better than your 60 score, and that one sold for $1,890. Uh, next up was the gray hair Ben Kenobi 45 back with the Star Wars Display Arena. It was a very slightly yellowed blister, uh, overall AFA 80, and that one sold for $386. Again, if you can live with a yellow blister and a couple of dings on the blister as well, uh, pretty nice looking example there. Uh, probably a little overgraded in terms of the blister score. Somehow it did get the 80 score despite the pretty pronounced blister ding right there. Uh, that's probably a little overgraded in my opinion, probably more like a 75, but still 386, that's probably about right for market there. Uh, next up, we're going to dig into some Power of the Force. There weren't many kind of later car backs. Most of them were 12 and 20 backs, uh, a few ESBs there, but uh, this one was the Power of the Force Luke Stormtrooper AFA 90. And this one did have the older kind of AFA label, so there were no subscores on that one, but it's very tough to get a 90 score uh, for with it, when AFA used to only do the single score on that. So that one sold for $2,761. That's kind of in line with an AFA 85 these days. Uh, so, you know, it seems like the market kind of uh, discounted the price a little bit, given that it was only a single score, even though it was a 90. Uh, but that was a pretty gorgeous example of the Luke Stormtrooper for uh, kind of about market. $27 to $2,800 is about market for an AFA 80. 85 ish, and uh, given that that one did only have the single score. Uh, next up is that uh, Luke Skywalker Battle Poncho Last 17 AFA 80 again with a yellow blister. It did have some sticker residue uh, right there, and uh, it also was a punched example. That one sold for $621. Again, that's another price that's right in line with market, if you ask me, and a very fair price. Uh, here was the gem of the entire batch, in my opinion. Uh, other than maybe the Vinyl Cape Jawa, but I, I would say this one's probably a lot more rare. And that's the Canadian Yak Face on the Power of the Force card, only released in, in Canada. And uh, this one was an AFA 85. And uh, th they didn't have the label pictured here, but a uh, pretty, pretty beautiful example. And uh, this one was 85, 85, 90 on the subscores. $13,789 took that home. That's kind of in line with market and about what you would expect. I, I might have seen slightly higher prices uh, last year. You might have been in kind of the fifteen dollars to $17,000 range. So prices have pulled back maybe just a little bit on that. Uh, but that was certainly a beautiful example. And it was a punched example too, which probably held the price back a little bit. Uh, next up, a few droids figures to round things out. First was the R2-D2 droids. And that one was an AFA 85 yellow blister unpunched. That one sold for $1,558, uh, maybe a little higher than, than where we've seen recently. So that, that was a nice example. Uh, fairly moderate yellowing, not too bad, but uh, you can see the little bit of yellowing there on the blister, uh, but presents very nice. And then next up and finally was an AFA 80 with the Clearview label up top. And uh, that was the C-3PO. That one sold for a good deal, $744. And uh, the sub scores on that were 80, 85, 85. So probably would have gotten a little bit higher score, in my opinion, if it had the, the classic view label on the inside of the acrylic case at the bottom versus up top. But, uh, I mean, that's an unpunched example, AFA 80 for 744. I've seen them for, go for more than that ungraded on eBay. So I thought that was a pretty good deal there. So anyway, as you can tell by this auction, there were some pretty beautiful items, lots of very high grades, especially on the 12 and 20 backs. And we'll, we'll maybe do a comparison here uh, to some of these items versus the items that Hakes that close towards the end of July. That's all I really had for this video. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll be back soon.